So you're building a new PC and you found yourself a case that has four USB 3.0 ports at the front. Convenient, right? Well, here's the catch. Your motherboard might support only two of them. In fact, most modern motherboards these days can support only two high-speed USB ports at the front of your case. But wait, how is this possible? Well, in this video, I will show you why is this happening, what you can do to fix it, and how you can avoid wasting money on very expensive motherboards. Let's begin by understanding how the front panel of a PC is connected to your motherboard. Each case has cables that need to be connected to the motherboard in order to power on buttons, ports and transfer data into your computer. The cable that is in charge of powering the USB 3.0 ports looks like this. And in our motherboard you can find a connector for it which looks like this. Now this cable is able to carry signal for only two ports at most. Meaning if we have four USB 3.0 ports in our case, you will have to plug two cables and not one. Now it is important to note that not all ports are necessary USB 3.0 ports. If we take a look at this ASUS ProArt PA602 case, we can see that it has two USB 2.0 ports and three USB 3.0 ports. Now USB 2.0 ports has a different cable that need to be connected to the motherboard and it is not the same as a USB 3.0 cable. This cable goes at the bottom of our motherboard and usually each motherboard has at least two connectors for this cable. Like in our USB 3.0 cable, a single cable can also carry signal for only two USB 2.0 ports at most. But unlike our USB 3.0 connector, which most motherboards have only one, most modern motherboards has at least two USB 2.0 connectors. Meaning we can power up up to four USB 2.0 ports without any problem. So in our ASUS ProArt PA602 case, we will have one USB 2.0 cable and one USB 3.0 cable. And that most modern motherboards can handle pretty easily. Now before we talk about what we do if we have four USB 3.0 ports, I want to take a minute just to talk about one more USB port which can also not be supported by your motherboard. And that is the Type-C port. Now, not all cases have a Type-C port, but in case you do... See what I did there? It is important to make sure you can use it. Unlike the USB 3.0 and the USB 2.0 ports, which most modern motherboards have, the Type-C connector is still a pretty new standard and some motherboards do not have a connector for it at all. And this is how a Type-C connector looks like. Usually you can find it located next to the USB 3.0 connector that we showed earlier. But again, not all motherboards have this. Even new modern motherboards such as the Gigabyte B760M DS3H DDR5 the front Type-C connector is still a pretty new standard and not even all cases have a front Type-C connector. Another important thing is you might see that some cases do not specify on the case itself the type of USB ports it has on the front. Like this Darkbase Pro 901 from Be Quiet. If you are not sure what kind of USB connectors your case have, you can check it on the manufacturer's website in the specification page. Here we can see that all four ports in this case are USB 3.2 type A ports, which means that we'll have two USB 3.0 cables and we need to make sure that our motherboard has two connectors for two USB 3.0 cables. 
So what do we do in case we have only one connector? Well, for starters, we can buy a motherboard like the ASUS ROG Strix Z890-S, which has two USB 3.0 ports for our two USB 3.0 cables. But the problem is this motherboard is very expensive and the amount of money we need to pay extra, it just doesn't make any sense. Now of course, with a modern motherboard like this, you will get more features for what you pay for, such as more M.2 slots for your SSD storage, higher audio solution, or even a fancy RGB LED screen. But let's be honest, do we really need all of that? Now you can find cheaper motherboards like this MSI B860M Gaming Plus Wi-Fi, but the problem is that they are very hard to find. Now this motherboard does have two USB 3.0 connectors, and by the way, you can see that one of them is angled, so it won't interfere with big graphics card like this one. Nice MSI. That's really thoughtful of you. But this motherboard has some serious compromises as it has less USB ports at the back. Unlike our $400 motherboard, which has plenty of USB ports. Just look at that. I've never seen that many USB ports in my life, to be honest. <laughs> well, you get what you pay for. Now, one of the reasons why this motherboard has less USB ports, it is because it has a different chipset. The ASUS ROG Strix has a Z890 chipset, and the MSI has a B860 chip chipset, which is one step lower. Now, why is that matters? The chipset is a collection of electronic components on a motherboard that manages the data flow between all the components and peripherals such as USB devices, meaning a Z890 chipset, which is higher, has much more bandwidth and capabilities compared to a B860 chipset. That's why a Z890 board is also more expensive. So what do we do if we already bought all the parts for our system? Is it too late? Well, of course not. Let me show you a few little ideas that not only will save you time and money, but also save you some headaches. First, we can add an add-on card to one of our PCIe slots, which looks a little bit like this. This card can be plugged to one of our motherboard's PCI Express slots and allows us to plug not just one, but two extra cables which in theory can give you up to 6 USB 3.0 ports. Insane, right? Now there's a ton of variations for those add-on cards. And by the way, links will be in the description box down below. Some of them even come with a front Type-C connector, just in case you need that as well. Now it is important to make sure you have space for an add-on card. Because if you have a small motherboard like this one, and you have a big graphic card, you might run out of space even if you do have a spare PCI Express slot. You can also get a splitter, like this one, which allows you to plug two cables into one connector. But I'd be careful with those splitters if you plug very demanding USB devices such as external hard drives or USB splitters. Because at the end of the day, the port on the motherboard can carry as much signal as the chipset allows it to. And it doesn't really give you the full bandwidth for each connector. You can also find a USB 3.0 to 2.0 adapter, which looks like this one. But you need to keep in mind that the signal that you will get in the end will be a USB 2.0 signal and not USB 3.0 signal. 
Also, make sure you don't need the USB 2.0 headers for other devices, such as all-in-one liquid coolers like this one from Corsair. This AIO liquid cooler uses a link hub that needs to be connected to the motherboard in order to transfer data. That hub uses a USB 2.0 connector that occupies one of your USB 2.0 headers on the motherboard in order to do so. And look, you can always just leave one of the cables unplugged until you can find a solution in the future. Maybe you will upgrade your motherboard. Who knows? Either way, don't assume that every motherboard works with every case 100% of the time. It is important for you to do your homework and make sure that your parts are compatible with each other. And remember, sometimes when you build a computer, you have to make compromises somewhere. But you know where you don't have to make compromises for? Subscribing to Full Tower TV if you learned something new today. Full Tower TV is a channel that is dedicated to helping PC builders just like you. So if you have any question or you need help with your build, please let me know in the comments down below. Until the next time, my name is Rafael, thank you for watching Full Tower TV and I will see you in the next one.